Good morning, family. I'm, uh, I'm pumped up and excited about this daggum Gino in Pursuit of Perfection book. Ooh, we, we just at the very beginning. It's the beginning of September. And, uh, and so we're going to jump right in. So he's talking about basically his first year at UConn. UConn was like, had a terrible record in the previous four years. They didn't have any facilities. They didn't have any equipment. They didn't have staff. They didn't have a budget. They didn't have nothing. He didn't have nothing to sell but his his vision and have and, and where they were going. So, and probably that's what you got. Anyway, so he's talking about the end of the first season. So now he's really, so the first season, he's inherited the players from the previous coach, you know, the, the team that was there when he got there. So after the first season, now he's got a chance to recruit some kids to come on his team, you know, his players. So listen to this. He says, oh, now, so his first year, even though, I mean, they still, I don't even know if they squeaked out or winning. No, they still end up having a losing record. Uh, but it was better than where they were. So now listen to this. Although there are some high moments that season, there are a lot of tears, too. Many of the kids we have simply don't belong in a Division I program. Many of them won't or can't make the commitment I'm asking them to make. It is obvious to CD, this is assistant coach, and me that we need to get our own kids. We need legitimate, talented players with a winning attitude, and we need them quickly. Ooh, we. And what I wrote in the margin, my insight, Everybody needs talented players with a winning attitude. Teammates, I don't if you the CEO, every CEO in America, every leader of any in, in any industry right now, unless they're creating something, if they building a team, they looking for what he just said. Talented players with a winning attitude. We all looking for talented players and a with a winning attitude. We gotta become a talented player with a winning attitude first. All right. I love that. Then he went on and go on, and he talks about how he recruited his first kid, his first player on his team, and made an impact. And he recruited not one of the old players. Now he goes on and talks about, you know, he bring her in, and uh, now obviously these are 18-year-old freshmen in college, Division One sports. They got, you know, it's a lot. It's a big commitment. So in a lot of cases, these kids aren't mature. So they not they not used to having as much responsibility. So listen to this. This but but when they meet Gino, they're gonna learn how to take some responsibility. All right, listen to this. Uh, bottom of page thirty. We bring in we bring Chris in. She's part of my family right away. She's babysitting my kids, coming to the house for dinner, the whole thing. We just love the kid. This is mostly in the summer. Now school starts. Woo, she getting ready to work. And we're two weeks into it, and she calls me up one night and says, Coach, I got a problem. I say, what's wrong with Chris? What's wrong, Chris? She says, I have this English paper due, and I'm stuck. I say, well, today is Friday. When did you get this assignment? She says, yesterday. I say, well, when is it due? She says, Tuesday. And I ask her, well, have you been to the library research? Now, listen to this. and you know that's some serious whining. She just got the assignment yesterday on a Thursday. She's calling him whining on Friday, and the paper not due to Tuesday. So instead of calling him, she need to be working on it. But all right, listen to this. Uh, when is it due? She says Tuesday. I ask her, have you been to the library and researched it? She answers me, well, I tried, but I'm stuck. And I say, now listen to this. He says, he said, he said I say, well, get unstuck, and then I hang up. Teammates. That's the kind of coaching you might not like it, and you might not want it, but that's the kind of coach you need. Because in reality, what would, like, like he says in the next chapter, he's in the next page, I guess Chris wanted me to do the paper for her. She's an okay student and special, and she's thinking, coach really likes me, so anytime I get in a jam, he'll help me. Well, I don't know. I'm like him. What did he think she was going to, he, did he think she was going to do the paper for her? Like, well, get us stuck. Go do the work, teammates. Nine times out of ten, you know, when people are not, you know, kind of bumping up against their limit, meaning they got now whatever they are required to do more than they used to doing, 
the natural default is blaming, whining, is making excuses. Oh, something, something, something. I ain't got, look, teammate, I don't care what time you get out of, got to get out of bed in the morning. I don't care how late you got to sleep. I don't care how many days in a row you got. I don't care if whatever is required is what you have to do or just quit and go do something else. Because the requirement is not going to change because it's out of your comfort zone. So my point is, get unstuck. You are responsible for getting unstuck. All right. Now, now let's go on. So then it goes on over here. So now, she obviously she figured it out because she played and she graduated. So anyway, season starts. This girl is doing great. She's not playing that. She's not a great defensive player. He pushes her to become a defensive player. She don't want to play defense. He pushes her anyway. Uh, she sucks it up. She comes back to be our best defender. And don't you know, she scores more points than ever. All that stuff is really, really hard for her to hear, but she responds. That has always been the way I've handled my players. I say things to kids they really don't want to hear. In the end, if they look at it, the only reason I'm saying it is because I can see past what they can see. That's what experience is. I tell them, if you trust me, I can get you where you want to be. It's a tough way to go about it, but it's a lot better than blowing smoke up their ass and telling them what they want to hear, even if it's not true. Teammates, listen, the only, he says, I handle my players. That that's, has always been the way I've handled my players. I say things to kids they really don't want to hear. In the, if, in the end, if they look at it, that's the only reason I'm saying it. Teammates, if the coach you have is always telling you what you want to hear, you need to get a new coach. If the coach you have is not, y'all not like disagreeing on some things, then what you need him for? Every, you're supposed to be disagreeing. The coach is trying to change your limits. Change your limits. Stretch your limits. Do more than what you were doing before. I'm pretty fitness kind of oriented and one of the guys that I study now he always talking about is more reps more weight and less time more rep more weight less time more rep more weight less time it's always got to be you got to push the limits to see growth to see improvement if you're not where you want to be get uncomfortable get a coach that can challenge you so I guess my point is if I had to wrap that up into uh, get a coach that'll tell you like it is and not what you want to hear. All right, teammate. Ooh, wait, ooh, don't you just, don't you just love this? I don't know what else to tell you. I don't know what, uh, what, how much better could it be? We're reading this dude won like ten straight championships. We're studying the most successful coaches in the history of athletics in America, and they telling you what they did. Teammate, let's copy them and go ahead and win big. Love you guys. You're running this play again tomorrow.